Hello everybody, welcome back to the second part of the second part of Photoshop Basics. Confusing? Yeah, I know. Um, we just got up to doing uh, the, 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 the tools. Um, got about halfway through, down to the eraser tool. Uh, let's just carry on. Obviously, eraser is pretty self-explanatory. It erases stuff. Whatever your background colour is, it will erase to that colour. Background eraser. Erases the background. And just the background. Wow. Maybe that brush size is a little bit too big. Increase the brush size to show you. Blop, blop, blop. You've uh, got a different option here called spacing. Spacing to one. You see, you get that sort of little lumpy line there. That's the spacing. If you drag that right up to a thousand. Wow. Whee! You see, the spacing is enormous. I don't like that. I'd much prefer to have it like that. Uh, Hardness. That will get rid of those little bumpy bits and gives you this nice little soft edge. Where's my f Moving on to the next one, Magic Eraser. It erases everything magically. And also, if you click it too many times on a big document like this, you can feel it will take forever. Even a big little base like mine. Yep. Um, where is this history thing? There it is. Right. Nah. Moving on. Paint bucket. We all love the paint bucket tool. We all know what it is. We all know what it does. It's a filling tool. It's used for filling stuff in. And the gradient tool. Is like a posh version and a nice version of the fill tool. You can see we've got the gradients here, and you drag and click and drag out as you create the gradient. If you want to have a straight line gradient, you hold down the shift key, click and drag, you get a straight diagonal, horizontal, or other diagonal. Gradient. Uh, we've got the blur tool, which isn't very good to show you on a gradient because it's already blurred. So um, I'll tell you what. Let's move this right back to where we started off from. Uh, blur. It will blur it. It's self-explanatory tool again. Pretty nice if you've got very sharp edges on something and you want to blur it because you don't like it. Or if you're trying to create an effect where it's sort of foggy, you can blur it and it makes it look kind of foggy. And then sharpen does the opposite. But using it too much can give you some nasty horrible effect like that. Which is okay if you want a horrible nasty effect like that, but I don't. So, see later. Um, sharpen, no, not sharpen, smudge. Smudge is it? We. Nice one. Um, dodge. Color dodge, so. Brightens things up. Uh,. Black and white basically creates burn. The opposite makes it darker. It's nice if it's if the photo is a little bit overexposed. You can um, sort of dumb it out with the burn tool. The next one is the sponge tool, 
which I have yet to have found its purpose. And doesn't seem to be doing a lot. So I'm going to have to try and figure that one out and come back to it in a later tutorial. Uh, pencil is like the polygon lasso, except um, you can right click and fill the path with your foreground colour. Stroke the path. And simulate pressure, which is quite cool, so you can get that uh, very easily. You've got the freeform pen tool, which is like the uh, lasso tool, except from it just does what the other thing, what the other one did. Um, Oh yeah, by the way, when you've got selections that have been made by these pen tools or lasso tools, whatever, you always have to click escape to get rid of that outline for it, because otherwise everything, you have all them selects and you don't want that. Um, right, okay, just to show you this, I need to have a pen tool selected, so, bosh. Um, to add anchor points, basically you add a point in between the line. You can create curves of these sort of handles. And you can also remove them with the delete anchor point tool. See you later. See you later. Um, and you can also convert them, which basically you click on it and you can bring out those handles by click and dragging and create a curve. So very handy, very malleable and awesome tool to use. Next one down is the text tool which obviously text blatantly right so up here you've got font, uh, I'll just change this font, so you can have italic, bold, regular, or a bold italic, size, is there and there are different options here for how it's rendered sharp, crisp, strong, smooth, or none, which looks horrible. Use to show the alignment, middle, left, middle, right, the colour, um, the warp. Fishy fishy and the character preferences. Uh, nearly there now. The next down is the path selection. If you've got your paths, that's the word I was looking for earlier, these paths here. You can't select them, click that, select it, drag it about. Um yeah. And then you've got the direct selection tool, which you can directly click on that one and start editing it. It's like a posh version of the anchor convert tool. Um, here we've got the shape tools, so you can create a rectangle, a rounded rectangle. And here you can change the radius of the roundness. But you have to do that before you have to do that before you drag it out. See that is a lovely rounded rectangle. Um, ellipse creates a circle. If you hold down shift, you create a perfect circle. The polygon creates some little amazing polygons. Uh, a line, or 
obviously a line and the custom shape. If you want to draw a snail, this tool is great. <coughs> but um, some of these things can be quite useful. Arrows and that, but I'm not quite sure about these bones. More, I've never tried drawing a bone before. And if I did, I wouldn't draw one like that. As well as a fish, it looks a little bit more like a shark. And a dog. Woof woof. That's everything in there. These are the 3D object rotations and uh, converting and editing tools. I won't go into them, they'll be covered in a later tutorial. And the hand tool. You literally move around your document with the hand tool. Whee! And then, yeah. Uh, underneath that is the rotate. We can rotate the whole document. If you hold down shift, it moves in more sort of predefined angled rotations. And the zoom tool. But I don't like using that zoom tool because it's too much to go all the way over there. Select the zoom tool and click. So if you, the shortcut is control plus to zoom in or control minus to zoom out. And the document's upside down. And that is it for these tools. That is almost bang on, spot on of everything. These will have to be covered in a later tutorial because I'm pretty sure I can't get through all of them in three minutes. Um. Hmm. No, I can't. No. Okay. Um. Well, I'll carry this on. That'll be part three of part two. Making sense. Um. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Don't forget to do the rate, comment, and subscribing. See you guys soon.